this um, lesson is going to be about technique for drumming. So all the different techniques that I have learned, I will try to share most of what I've learned from most of my teachers that are very advanced drummers and I will share with you how technique helps and doesn't help um, and my concept about what technique should everyone use. So what I have learned, my approach for learning and it still goes the same. I am still still learning and I will continue to learn from more advanced drummers than me and even the advanced drummers they keep learning and looking at other people and seeing what they do and teach each other some uh, tricks and new techniques. So what I did in my learning approach is I decided at some point I'm going to learn a little bit from every drummer that I liked their drumming and then decide on my own so that I don't have to have a specific person that teaches me everything their own way because I noticed that there's a lot of great drummers out in the world everyone plays very differently and when someone says this is a technique I'm going to teach you you have to do it this way I think you should think about it more deeply every person every human I think me as a biology scientist I qualify to say that every human has different genome every genome makes you unique in the way you look, in the way you move, in your balance point, what muscles are stronger than others. So I might have certain muscles that are stronger than others. Uh, generally, there are certain sets of muscles in most humans that are bigger, bigger than others. Like most humans have um, calf muscles on their feet that are bigger than their shin muscles. So for certain double bass technique, it's important to use your calf muscles because it's going to allow you for more endurance. For certain people, they can get that same endurance using their full leg motion or their shin muscles and it works just fine because of their unique human being. And so that's kind of what I learned and concluded is that there's no one technique specific to every human that they should be using on the drum set. Some people have longer hands and some people have shorter hands and longer legs and so on. So you have to adjust your seat differently, your cymbals differently to what works better for you. The point is and the trick is to learn from as many people as possible and try their tricks and techniques and the way they set up their drums. Try all of these different things for a little bit of each. Be open to learning new things but then you have to decide which one works the best for your body shape and the human that you are. And so for this one, um, I'm going to share some things that I learned. For example, um, how to hold your drumsticks. There, it's a, such a debatable topic. So many people see different people, different drummers holding their drumsticks differently and they talk um, in different ways about it. They, some of them say, oh, he has bad technique. Some people like my... Uh, one of my teachers, Derek Roddy, if you go to YouTube and just write Derek Roddy Drumio or Drum Lesson, you're going to find um, a drum lesson for Derek Roddy talking about these things and about that he cares more about how he sounds than how he looks like when he's playing. And so it really doesn't matter how my hand looks like. I know some people speak about, well, it's not about the look, but you're going to hurt your joints eventually if you keep doing that specific motion, whatever it is. If someone is not used to seeing a person using their wrist, they're going to think wrist motion is bad and it's going to damage your whatever tendons or joints or something. Some people have that, uh, they're more prone to these damages, some of them are not. So the point is basically when you practice technique, your muscles are going to be sore if it's something you're not used to. But as uh, if it's sore, that's not a bad thing. If it's painful and the pain is persisting and it's sharp, then you know the difference between sore muscles versus painful body parts. If it's painful, you have to stop it. You know you're trying to do something that's not good for your body. If it's sore, then that's kind of normal and it kind of fades away gradually um, when you walk away from the exercise maybe a day or two after. So that's how you, that's your indication for if it's damaging your body, if it's bad for your health, or if it's something that's just sore because you're not used to it, you're, that muscle has not worked out enough. Um, so, so for example, um, Derek Roddy is like the fastest drummer or one of the fastest drummers in the world. And he always talks about how he doesn't have a lot of finger muscles. And most of my drummer drumming teachers, I went to um, Drum Technique Academy where I had so many speed metal drummer teachers. Uh, and they all focused a lot on 
um, finger technique and then Derek Roddy also joined in Drum Technique Academy and taught me personally that he doesn't use a lot of his fingers um, in his playing. He used a lot of wrist muscles. Um, so a lot of kind of that motion and that works for him. So if you do a blast beat, um, you don't have to, you can be doing it this way. That's kind of the motion on my right hand, just and I'm not moving my fingers at all. Some people like let a gap. I notice also Derek sometimes when he plays like there's sometimes some gap like where the stick is hitting the symbol and then it kind of bounces back on the fingers. I saw another drummer where he uses a motion that starts from his wrist because there's a bigger muscle group here than in the fingers. Um, kind of like a twitching motion, kind of like this. And he's not moving his fingers at all. It's just kind of like the stick is bouncing back and forth between the palm of your hands back to your fingers. And that rebound is kind of what keeps it going and the rebound of the cymbal itself. Um, so kind of like that, just a twitching motion um, that's coming, starting from the wrist. Um, kind of like that for a faster speed. That only mainly works for fast speed. You can't use that same twitching motion for a lower speed. My other teacher, for example, Matt Byrne from Hatebreed, um, he's also a great drummer. Um, he taught me an exercise where he just holds his drumstick and does that in the air um, to help you gain some, like, again, wrist motion and wrist muscles um, without having any rebound. And so that's one of the things. You can also practice on a pillow. And some people say, oh, the pillow is gonna, it's not gonna help you because there's no rebound. And here there's rebound, so you have to learn how to work with a rebound. Um, some people say, well, it's going to be really good for your wrist muscles no matter what you're playing on. And of course, some surfaces have more rebounds than others. Also, it depends on how you tune your drums. Um, if you tune it very tight, then that's going to give you more rebound, but the sound is going to be different. Then if you want to tune it differently, there's no rebound. You played on someone else's drum set. You have to have some muscles when there is no rebound. And so the other um, thing that I also learned, for example, Marco Miniman um, showed an exercise once of how to use the drum set to your advantage, basically how to make it do the work for you. Um, and that would be basically how to hold your drumstick. Where is the balance point? Where's the rebound point? So every drumstick has different balance points. So for example, I have these drumsticks. They're pretty different than these ones. These are my signature ones and these are Marco Miniman's signature. There's difference in length. Um, these are probably the same um, width like all along and it gets narrower at the top, of course. And this one is very wide at the bottom and it gets, um, it's almost like a 2B at the bottom and then it gets um, almost like a 5B. Um, it gets kind of smaller and uh, thinner as you go up um, and it's longer. So the balance point of this stick is gonna be different than the ba balance point of that stick. So the point is, basically, there's no one way of holding a stick. Um, it's all about what is the, the point where it's giving me the most rebound, if I want that, if I'm looking for a rebound in, in whatever I'm playing. So if you hold this drumstick like this and hit the whatever symbol you have, it's not bouncing back. You try a different point. See, this one is bouncing more when you hold it maybe from here. It's giving me more rebound when I hold it around here than when I hold it from the very bottom of it. See, it's not bouncing back. Um, this stick might give me a different rebound point, like if I do this, not much, then. And some people are like, why are you holding it all the way up? And most people don't hold it all the way here. And that's just because the balance point of the stick is different. I have other sticks that are all the same width all the way. It doesn't even have a thinner end. Um, and these ones, the balance point is in the middle because everything is even. And that's just physics, you know. If you choose to play different shapes of drumsticks, you have to know the rebound point of everyone. You have to find it out by yourself. Um, but mostly some people rely on this, uh, on little like marks on certain brands that are more known if you're playing something that's not doesn't have a specific point or a logo somewhere then you're not going to know so you just have to learn how to find the rebound point for that purpose that's just one of the techniques i learned um, one of the other techniques that i i see a lot of people using for metal is um, push pull basically 
doing kind of that motion. And that's what some people use. Again, there are very fast drummers out there that don't use that technique. Um, there are some techniques that are useful. The point is basically to know when technique is useful, what technique works for you. Um, some people work with their like whole arm muscles and I know most people don't, but some people do it and it sounds good and it doesn't hurt them or damage their body in the long term, um, so that works. The other thing that I learned basically, I was trying to do something faster, um, triplets or like groups of four or five on the hi-hat once and I was, I think I was doing it this way, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, like if you want to try to do it faster, um, that would go like this. I think I was trying to push my fingers kind of like in this motion and um, my teacher Marco Miniman showed me that I should keep my fingers kind of following the stick so basically I would do so I'm kind of keeping them and I'm kind of doing this motion kind of like you're cutting something like that you're hitting two different zones of the hi-hat um, so that's one of the tricks that I learned where technique was actually useful for me. Sometimes I don't worry about technique, I just play and if it sounds good and doesn't hurt me, that's all that matters. And so that's kind of what I wanted to share. The other thing is like holding your stick. Again, we were talking about how people debate that topic a lot. Um, my teacher Don Famolaro was telling me if you are playing a lot of rock and metal, your grip shouldn't be like, for example, Annika Niles, she's a great drummer, and when she was teaching us in a clinic um, here in Denver, she said, when you hold your drumstick, or when she at least holds her drumstick, she holds it this way where there's a gap between the fingers, and you should be able to pass another drumstick through it, and it comes right through, and so that's kind of her way of doing it. Um, and then when she plays, she plays like this, and there's like a huge, kind of a huge gap between the fingers. Um, when my teacher Don Famolaro was teaching me, he said, you're playing heavier stuff than her, so that wouldn't work because things that, your, your sticks are going to come off if you're hitting hard. Um, and so he said, hold your sticks like this and just do one turn and then grab it. The way I'm holding it now is supposed to be the way that I keep it in my hands. So basically, my it's in the palm of my hands, basically. I have a heavier, more stable grip to it so that if I hit hard on an acoustic set, it doesn't come off. Um, and so that's kind of the difference of how people hold their drumsticks. Um, so there's all different ways. Just expose yourself to all the different ways. Learn from different people and then see what works for you. That's the main point of this lesson. <laughs>